I'm joined now by Mary Fahey from uh, Catholic Voices, uh, an organisation that promotes uh, the representation of the Catholic faith in the media. Thanks very much for, for coming to talk to us. So, uh, in proclaiming her saint, the Pope said that uh, Mother Teresa had spent her life, quote, bowing down before those who were spent, left to die on the side of the road, uh, seeing them in their God-given dignity. Um, presumably, this act of making her a saint ties in with, with what he wants to do with the church and his, his kind of lines that he's following. Yeah, they're very similar in their outlook. In fact, the church has always done that. Um, the church has always looked after the poor. For example, it's the biggest provider still and always of education, social care in the world. However, Francis has a particular mission to make that known, to, to tell everybody that this has to be, we all have to be responsible for it. So it chimes in very much with her because she said that, you know, that the, every single person she met was, was Jesus in disguise. And mercy was... She's like a guidebook to mercy, really. And it was interesting that... Uh, I understand that 1,500 homeless people were brought in in buses and, and uh, given food and actually they were sort of fed a lunch by the nuns and the priests. Yes. So they became the kind of... So they were served, essentially, by the, by the people there. Um, a gesture or, or... I mean, I suppose a lot of these things you could sort of describe as a kind of a... You know, it is, it is for the image, isn't it? But uh, presumably there is a lot of that going on anyway under Pope Francis. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, talking about Mother Teresa, as you said, she, her nuns now work in over 130 countries. And the church, take one example, is the biggest provider for um, AIDS help in the world, bigger than any other organisation. So I think them doing that today, yes, you could say it was, uh, you know, to show what they're... You know, to show what the church does. But actually, the reality goes on in wars, places of war. Where there's human suffering, you will find the church, you'll find a nun, a religious order, anywhere in the world. And that's what we've done for centuries. I think the Pope and Mother Teresa were great to show us that this is what we all should be doing. This is what everybody should be doing, every Christian. Uh, and tell us a little bit more about the kind of the miracle element of the sainthood. How critical is that to, uh, to, to being called a saint? Yet, yeah, what you have to... There's a, quite a lengthy investigation that has to be gone through because it would be easy to look at somebody and say, oh, yes, they're a great person, but obviously the church has to be really careful. And we want to... The church wants the truth. The church doesn't want to call somebody a saint if they're not a saint. So there's loads, for example, for Mother Teresa, she, it was over 350,000 pages of testimonies had to be gone through to even get her to the stage before being a saint. So... The miracles are, um, yeah, they're a sign that it has, they have to be part of it because what they are is, you know, the Pope doesn't make a saint, God makes a saint, but for us here, it's about um, somebody prays to her and a miracle has to be spontaneous, it has to be lasting, and there can be no other scientific explanation. So the scientists, actually, there is no other explanation for those, but it is integral. Just, just very briefly, on, on the issue of the critics, I mean, do you think the fact that she's now a saint will finally lay some of that to rest, or do you think there'll still be people who criticise her now that she, even though she is a saint now? I think there'll still be people who criticise her. If you look at even Gandhi, you know, Martin Luther King, Jesus himself, people criticised. Um, you know, if you take one... You just have to look at Mother Teresa's life and that somebody said Christopher Hitchens was one of her big critics. And actually, she, all she said about him was that I'll pray for him and her life and what she's done and her legacy answers those criticisms. She didn't need to answer those criticisms herself. OK, Mary Fahey, thank you very much indeed. For thank, you. To talk to us. thank you. Thank you.